tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. The following events occurred during a two-week vacation stay at a rented house in Cape Cod. I was not particularly old, I believe I was nine and my sister was four. My mother, however, was in her thirties, so I can't chalk up her experiences to an overactive imagination. For the first few days, things were fine. We learned the layout pretty quickly. There was a basement with a washer, dryer, and a TV in a separate room. On the main floor was the kitchen, a proper living room, and a bathroom. And on the second floor were the bedrooms, three in total. One day it was particularly stormy, so there would be no trips to the beach or nature walks. My parents, eager for as much private time as they could get, sent my sister and I down to the basement to watch what little TV our antenna could pick up. My sister and I managed to get a decent version of PBS, which meant the static wasn't too bad. We continued to watch, I absentmindedly playing my Game Boy, and my sister more enthralled by some show. And then it all stopped. My Game Boy shut off, the light bulb popped, but the TV did not turn off. Instead, it showed nothing but static. And then, the smell. From the other room, the one with the washer and dryer, there was a smell that is not even partially described by the word rank. Think of a bag of rotting meat kept in the summer sun for days on end, and you can begin to imagine it. Let's go, please, my sister whimpered. I took her hand and we walked back up. My parents were not terribly amused. They listened to our story, sighing as we spoke. Finally, Mom said, All right, if I go down and check, and it's all okay, will you go back down? We agreed, knowing if anyone could make it all better, she could. She disappeared into the black basement, flashlight in hand, replacement light bulb box held in the other. We expected her to return quickly. She didn't. After ten minutes that stretched into eternity, she finally came back up. Okay, kids, you can stay up here. In fact, I don't want you going down there again. We didn't know what that meant, but accepted it gladly. Mom never went back down into that room. She insisted on doing laundry at laundromats in town. I would not ask her about what happened for years. On another night, I was woken by a horrid scream from my sister's room. My dad burst from his room and slammed her door open, picked her up and took her downstairs. It took over an hour and a couple of s'mores to calm her down, but she finally agreed to tell us what was wrong. She had seen the entire room soaked in blood, top to bottom. Handprints, streaks, dripping splatters. We wrote it off as a dream, but she refused to go back up for the rest of the night. Mom took a look in the room, and I caught her whispering to my dad, The smell is there. Finally, my encounter with whatever it was. My parents had taken my sister into town, planning on doing some shopping with her. I voiced my dismay, and they said I could stay at the rented home if I wished. I whiled away some time watching Disney videos and eventually started to read a book. Eventually, I had had enough reading, I put down the book, and my eyes shot open in surprise. Near the ceiling, slowly circling about as if it were some ethereal shark cruised an orb, fire red and yet translucent. I didn't move as I watched it, hoping not to scare it away. Part of me was fascinated by it, as if it were as ordinary as a bird on the porch. Then I heard the car door slam. My parents had arrived, and the orb, a trailing tail following, raced towards the wall, vanishing. As for what happened to my mom in the basement, when I finally did ask her years and years later, she suddenly became very still, and spoke quietly. She had intended to simply change the light bulb downstairs, figuring that, in our surprise, I turned off my Game Boy and my sister nudged the antenna at a clear reception when the bulb died. So, she took out the old bulb and put a new one in. It didn't work. She tried another one. It too didn't work. As she tried the remaining bulb, she began to smell something, but 
This time it had an oily stench to it. Thinking that one of the machines in the washing room had broken or perhaps a breaker went off, she put down the bulbs and walked into the room. She shone her flashlight on the machines, but nothing. Then she looked at the other end of the room only to see... It. It was a short man. Crouched over, a piece of maggot-covered meat held in his hand. It looked at my mom, smiled with sharp teeth and black eyes, and whispered, Hello, Lori. Unable to move or even scream, she watched it slowly sink into the floor. Mom left in a goddamn hurry after that. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.